Let's take a look at the August 2019 update to Lightroom. If you're not sure if you have it or not, just head over to Lightroom's help menu, and then you can scroll down to updates and you can check if you do have the latest version of Lightroom Classic, which is 8.4, okay? This is also for the subscription version only. If you don't have the subscription version, please do me a big favor, stop watching this video, jump over onto my channel or over onto my website, and I've got plenty of other editing videos that I'm sure can help out. Let's get to the first one, which is gonna be in your preferences. Uh, if you go to Lightroom menu on a Mac or the edit menu on a PC, and you go over here to performance, you're gonna notice Lightroom has, has taken advantage of the graphics processor, if you look in the top left corner. First thing I'm gonna do is point you to a video that I did a while back called Tips to Speed Up Lightroom because it talks a little bit about this and some things that a lot of people just unknowingly do that can slow down Lightroom and things you can do to speed it up. Well, one of the things that Lightroom has done for a while is use the graphics processor. Most people, this will be set to auto. You can come in here and check custom depending on the power of your graphics card and depending on what you're doing, this will help. So it's actually not just using it for displaying your photos, but also using it for the editing of your photos. So to speed that up. And then Adobe says, and usually when you launch Lightroom, you'll see the screen if you read the, uh, the new update. Uh, Adobe even says that it's kind of tuned for number one, certain editing controls, and then also uh, 4K and larger screen. So it's really dependent on the, the screen that you're pushing this out to, because that can be a big bottleneck for Lightroom. These large screens just require more, okay? So the best thing you can do is jump in here, experiment with it, and, uh, and see how it's working for your photos. Again, ad you know, adjust, try turning it on, turning it off, and seeing which one you get better performance with. Okay, number two, we're gonna head over here to the library module, which actually you can do it from any module inside of Lightroom, and that is go over to your collections. If you go to your collections, uh, you can jump in here and you can right click on any collection and add a color label. So a while back, they added color labels to folders to make them stand out a little bit more for certain things that you may be working on. Same thing with collections. Now, one of the things if you use collections or maybe even collection sets, you can go in there and even adjust your collection sets and maybe give different color labels for different stages of your workflow, whether you're working on just selecting some basic picks and then whether you're going to the, the final selects that you're going through, color labels can just be a good visual indicator inside of there. Alrighty, next up, if you come up here to the file menu and you go down to export, you will notice under file settings that PNG is now one of the options in there. You've been able to import PNGs into Lightroom for quite a while, but now you can export a PNG if you need to. Overall, Adobe says there is some library enhancements as far as scrolling through your photos and showing your photos. Again, I'm gonna point you to that video about tips to speed up Lightroom because there's a good tip in there that will really help you speed through your photos if you're looking through your photos and you need to get through them really fast, there's a tip in there that will help that out. And you can see here, it'll go through those photos really fast. The last one is actually pretty cool. So uh, let me go open up some photos here. I did some HDR brackets. So the last one is a way to batch process your HDR merging. So if you were to look here, I've got, a, uh, I've got an HDR bracket. There's uh, the first photo, the second photo, the third photo. And then I go to the next one, the first one, second one, third one. Well, what I can do, I can create a stack, all right? So I can click on one photo and I know these are three shot brackets. So I can shift click on the last one. So I've selected those photos. I can come up here to the photo menu and go down to stacking and to just choose group into stack. And it's a good keyboard shortcut to remember if you're gonna do this a lot, if you shoot a lot of brackets like this. So I can group these into a stack. So I'll just press command or control G. Then I'll go to the next bracket and I can do the same thing. Come up here, photo, go down to stacking and I can group into stack. Another thing you can try if you don't want to do this manual is auto stack by capture time. That can help out as well. But I'll group these into a stack. So now I've got two stacks over here. Again, imagine this were to be 10 stacks or 15 stacks. Well, what I can do is click on one, shift click on the other ones, come up here to the photo menu, go down to photo merge, and now I can do my HDR or my panorama merges just from that menu as a batch process. Keep in mind, the only caveat to this is it's gotta be 
a similar thing. So it's got to be all HDR stacks or all panorama stacks. They, they can't be mixed and match and Lightroom won't figure out what to do for each one. That's a really good thing. If you do shoot a lot of HDR, you can go through, stack those photos, and then just do a batch merge and have it all done for you in just one click. As I mentioned earlier, make sure you go check out that video on tips to speed up Lightroom. I'm telling you, there's so many little things in there that you can do to make your process of using Lightroom a lot faster.